if coca-cola had a vegan version this drink would definitely be it this is even tastier than coca-cola hello and welcome to another episode of the rooted experience i mean it was amazing to find out that there is a local version of the world's famous coca-cola and it's locally made right here in the village i mean i have to show you guys without wasting much time let's get started just a quick one before we get started <laughs> So this young lady right here is a typical example of what you would find in the village. Every single household has a petty trade that the wife or the mother is involved in. Most of the women are into food production, farming, selling of petty goods, cooking, selling of firewoods, selling of yam. In the village, you would never find an idle person. No one is idle right here in the village. Every single person from the children to the father to the mother, they are all busy. So what happens is they have a store and every day they make these local beverages and people patronize and buy them. So there are two drinks in this video. The first one is called Lights and it's made from Kenke, a type of Kenke here in Ghana. Um, it's referred to as Fancy Kenke in the south. And this Kenke is the base for this first drink. It is mashed and grinded and then it is used to make the lights. So the first step here is to take off the skin or the wrap it has been wrapped with leaves and she takes it off to mash them in the bowl what i find interesting about these drinks is the fact that their base is totally healthy Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What type of thinking is this? The, they are using maize. Uh, maize. One thing I observed is there's a sense of purpose in the village. Um, as you can see in this particular grinding mill, it's a general grinding mill, and there are different families who come here to grind. And are into this exact same business so it's a popular and widely consumed drink in every single household there are vendors who make them so every day this young lady you see here has to come to the grinding mill buy the kenke mash the kenke grind it and take it back home every single day for them to make the drink for sale this is how they sustain themselves and get their livelihood which is quite humbling to witness because these people work so hard but they earn very little the bottle of this drink retails for one Ghana CD which is approximately 17 cents and this is how they have to survive as a family of four so this is a self-service center meaning when you bring your items here for grinding you literally have to do it yourself and you have to do it as quickly as possible because there are other people waiting in line for you to finish and they will also have their turn and then the owner of the facility is on you to be as quick as possible because they're trying to reduce electricity consumption so you really need to hurry and you really don't have time to waste and slob around here Once in a while, you can get assistance from the owner if you're moving too slow or if you have a huge batch as my lovely friend here does. But apart from that, you do every other thing grinding yourself. Now, I usually get lots of comments from my lovely subscribers saying that their place is not hygienic, where they prepare their food is filthy, 
when they prepare their food is dirty, they are not clean, and Sky Bell tell them not to use plastic, tell them to clean up their surroundings and all of that. Picture this. Someone lets you into their home as a guest. You are allowed into a home as a guest. And what do you do? Comments like this sadden me because it still shows me that we still have a long way to go when it comes to acknowledging and respecting people's way of life, basically. Because... You are allowed as a stranger into someone's home and you are allowed to observe their way of life. In my opinion, it is completely disrespectful to be welcomed into someone's home and then the first thing you do is tell them how dirty they are and how they should sweep and clean up. You wouldn't do that in real life. You would not do that anywhere. So I don't see why it is okay to tell people what to do in their own home. I'm grateful enough that they opened up their space to me and allow me to capture their daily lives. But the last thing I would do is to dictate to them how they should or shouldn't live. Granted, hygiene methods and sanitary methods should be improved upon. But it's the mindset that bothers me much more than the sanitary conditions of these things and these people do their best they do their very best to keep their environment clean and prepare their food as hygienic as possible but you have to understand something that these people are their paramount priority is survival so when we head over to a grinding mill we're not going there to clean up and make sure the place is spanking clean and neat people are walking in and out to get their stuff grinded as quickly as possible and head over to their homes and finish the making process of their drink for sale and earn a living that they would survive on for the next day. So pardon them if their primary concern is not to be fixated with how clean or how neat the place is because after all, what matters is their utensils and what goes into their mouths so as you can see here they are recycling previously used water bottles and plastic cans and these were washed the previous day with soap and water and then it was left overnight to dry to be used for storage the following day unfortunately i wasn't able to try this particular drink on camera but i can say that this was very creamy very refreshing and very tasty as well i thoroughly enjoyed it i head on over to the next and the famous drink called poha this is made from tamarind and it is the rival the vegan rival the local rival of the famous coca-cola i mean they even have a similar color to them this is first made from the fresh tamarind uh, seed that is mixed with water and literally just filtered the process was so simple that i was amazed at how tasty this very simplistic drink could be now once it is drained this seed is added and it's called usulu which is an equivalent of some kind of pepper and it is grounded locally on this slab of stone they call it a grinding stone she grinds it manually until it's made into a fine paste and then she dilutes it or mix, mixes it with water now this stuff gives it a spicy hint almost like ginger and i really like that about it when you go around the village what i observed is that people barely have enough money to afford luxuries like soft drinks and expensive drinks that cost one cd which is about 17 cents or or more so they heavily consume these locally made drinks and as you can see it's also a petty trade by this beautiful woman 
who sells this at home and this is her business she sells this alongside um, another drink called Sobolo and another one called ice cream she had already completed the preparation so I wasn't able to capture that but basically this is how the local coca-cola is made So this is the final result guys it is tied in a poly bag and it is self served chill okay so let's try out tamarind wow this is better than coca-cola African Coca-Cola. This is the best. Guys, what? Tamarind. Ah, Jesus Christ. Hmm. So sweet extremely flavored tasty very refreshing if coca-cola had a vegan version this drink would definitely be it this is even tastier than coca-cola god this is the best what 